you've only been Green Party leader for three weeks. How will the Green Party look different under Sonia Furstenau than it did under Andrew Weaver? I think the the fundamental change is, is my focus on health and well-being, my focus on you know, of course we have to be recognizing how important climate action is, but we also have to recognize the moment we're in, how people are feeling right now, the insecurity and worry that people feel. And we have to have solutions that address the, the, the problems that we have right now, housing, the opioid overdose, the, the lack of affordability. And we have to be putting those solutions so that they are long-term solutions, that we're building exactly where we want to get to. Andrew Weaver himself, though, has even come out and supported the NDP. There have been some divides between you and, and him as your predecessor. Do you think that will hurt you, this election? I, I, I can't speak to Andrew's decision to support somebody that gave $6 billion to the fossil fuel industry. He's a climate scientist. He understands the implications of that. Uh, but we are looking forward, and we are very excited about the direction of the Green Party right now. Up until this point in the campaign, your messaging has been very focused on we shouldn't even be having an election in the first place. But we're now halfway through. How many votes do you think people are going to vote on it simply out of spite? Like, do you think that messaging is actually going to shift people's minds when they go to the ballot? We're, we're putting out platform pieces that are really focused on that health and well-being piece. So everything that we put out, we can point to how this will create more health and well-being. Uh, we're focusing on solutions. It is disappointing that we're not doing those solutions right now in the legislature. We could be. We have been for three and a half years. And what I'm saying to British Columbians is uh, ensure that no one party has all the power in this legislature. The Greens did not stop LNG, fracking, Trans Mountain. Do you think your party failed your voters on those issues? We voted against them. We voted against the LNG bill, the, the $6 billion giveaway. We voted against it 14 times. It was the Liberals and the NDP who pushed that bill forward. The Liberals could have voted with us, and that would have probably brought down government. It would have been a, a, a moment when we'd have to have questioned, was there confidence in this government? But instead, they collaborated with the NDP. The Greens have been blamed a lot by the NDP so far in this campaign. If fast forward to October 24th, we see a deja vu of last election, would you still put your support behind John Horgan in a minority government? Look, we have to make it work. Whatever the voters decide, we make it work. And we make it work with a commitment to stability and to long-term governance. And, and we've done that for three and a half years. It was John Horgan, absolutely, who called this election. But we have to say, Whatever the voters deliver, we have to make that work in service to the people of BC. Is there anything in the NDP platform right now uh, that would give you pause from supporting the, the party as a whole, again, if we were in that minority situation again? They're not talking about it in their platform, but their commitment to subsidizing the oil and gas industry, to subsidizing fracking, is a problem. And I think that the, we, we would have to identify this as something that we would need to work through. There's also the question of Site C, delivering on Site C so that it can give subsidized electricity to the LNG and fracking sector is not the future for this province. Why do you think your party does struggle to attract more diverse members? I mean, the green base as a whole on a federal level as well is largely made up of Caucasian voters, uh, largely on Vancouver Island. So what are you going to do to broaden that tent? I think we're making strides. If you, I mean, we have a a woman leader of the of the provincial party. We now have a black Jewish woman leader of the federal party. Uh, I think that this is an indication of the, the development of green supporters and green voters generally. We have Muslim candidates. We have uh, many diverse candidates running in BC right now. Of course, we want more diversity. It's hard in a snap election to achieve those those goals, but we are doing better now than we did in 2017. We've made strides even in a snap election. So you talk about the slate of candidates you have, young, um, climate-focused candidates, but what's it going to take, and are you confident they can translate that into votes and tap into those to, to the youth movement that is so focused on climate change right now? Are you going to see that come election night? Absolutely. I mean, I, I think that young people are going to look at the candidates that we have in front of them and say, I see myself in that candidate. They're speaking to things that matter to me. 
The NDP has put out its platform and a lot of the policies are very social focused um, through the lens of the pandemic. So what are you going to say to voters that will separate the Greens even more so for left of center voters? Do they want to support a party and a leader for whom having more power and less accountability in the legislature is a driving force for why he, drew, he caused this election to happen? Or do they want to vote for a continuation of the collaboration, the cooperation that we've seen, the policies that are evidence-based, moving forward in far more progressive ways, no scandals, uh, and recognizing that every, in every other sector in the world, people are expected to work together. That's how we get to our best outcomes. Looking at the overdose crisis, I mean, this has been a public health emergency for years now. If you find yourself in the balance of power situation again, is there a non-negotiable that you would put in an agreement like CASA on that front? And if so, what would that be? Look what's happened because we followed the guidance and advice of Dr. Bonnie Henry. We are navigating this pandemic fairly successfully. And even now we're hearing that the curve is flattening again. She's giving us the guidance and we're, we're following her scientific evidence-based guidance. We need to do the same thing on this other health crisis. It is a health crisis. So follow the guidance, decriminalization, access to a non-poisonous drug supply for people to stabilize, access to treatment, access to being able to uh, get the counseling. We need to implement them and we need to implement them urgently. Looking at the outcome of this election, if your party maintains its current two seats in the legislature, no more, no fewer, would you consider that a success or a failure for the Greens? We're striving for more seats. We're striving to, to really be able to have representatives in that legislature who are not committed, first and foremost, to a party, but who are committed to their constituents and committed to the people of BC. We need more in that legislature.